Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about how play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario 64. In the last episode if you don't remember we went ahead and f defeated Bowser for the second time, got to 35 stars which is halfway through the game. And we basically did a bunch of other stuff like get the Vanish Cap and we completed Big Boo's Haunt. And in this episode we're going to go ahead and just see what other stars there are to collect. And it's not a good one right off the bat. We're going to go ahead and just turn right around. Whoops. So we're going to go right this time because I actually know what I'm doing now. Elevate for eight red coins. I don't think it's as bad as I think it's going to be. I think it's mostly bad because um, I like to do the 100 coin stars on the same star as the red coin stars. And the 100 coin star for this is absolutely brutal. So the way that this one works is for the first four you have to go onto this little platform here. And you need to guide it in different directions, but if it bumps into the wall, it freaks out. Oh, no, come back. Okay, that's red coin number one. Number two is in this next box here. Punch. I don't know why I made an onomatopoeia for the punch. Is it onomatopoeia if, if I, like, say it out loud? Because onomatopoeia is when an action is described in written form. So, it's like a weird gray line. Our next four stars are going to be over here on this pole. Ow. Wall jump off here. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Uh, so yeah, that's fun. Gonna long jump right over here. Got s coins number six and seven. And er, five and six, because those are seven and eight over there. They kind of misdirect you with this box right here. Because you think there's going to be a red coin in it. And then it's just nothing. So, it's the 1st of December, meaning that we're only a month away from being done with the year. I know people probably say this every year, but it really feels like just the other day we were celebrating New Year's 2021. Is this what getting old feels like? Star number three is Metalhead Mario Can Move. Obviously, you'll need Metal Mario. It's weird that he's called Metalhead Mario in this one. It makes you think he's like a... punk rock, like, sort of version of Mario. I feel like there's fan art of that somewhere. I could totally see that in, like, late 2000s. Uh, make sure to not forget uh, Metal Mario over here. I was too busy making fun of the name Metalhead Mario that I actually forgot to grab Metal Mario. Isn't that weird how he became his own Mario Kart character? Anyways, you just want to step on the underwater switch. You can't press that unless you're wearing the metal cap. And you get star number 37. Navigating the Toxic Maze. So there are two Toxic Maze stars, and there's an, a really easy way to get them, and then there's the normal way to get them. I'll go ahead and show the easy way to get them on screen, and then the main screen will just be me navigating the Toxic Maze. So, the way you enter is you want to go through one of these two doors. For some reason, I always like to try to go through this section. There we go. So, like the title of the star says, 
It's a toxic maze, meaning that if you stay in it for too long, you start taking damage. Which is very bad. You can, of course, replenish it with coins, and if you use Metal Mario, then you can just navigate it normally. But, eh, I did this faster. You just walk through the door, and... You know what? I think I might have gotten the wrong star. But that's okay, because I frequently, frequently mix up the two. And I think everyone else does as well. Okay, let's actually get the real navigating the toxic maze, and I've already gone through the toxic maze once, so I'll just go ahead and get to the star using the cool speedrun strats. You can actually long jump at this corner and it'll just glitch through. Jump back through here, and you want to go through the opening that has these little green lines underneath it. You'll be met by these weird fire spewing things and a couple of bats. For some reason, I always want to call the bats keys, like from Legend of Zelda. But that's star number 39. Watch for Rolling Rocks. I don't know why that title was so hard to say for me. You want to jump right over here, and the way that we got to Dory, we want to go that way with the, you know, Rolling Rocks. But instead of walking through the door, we actually want to wall jump right here. And right up in this little alcove, I guess, is the star. Star number 40. So with star number 40, we want to hop right up here, and right over here is course 7, and don't let the fiery face fool you, Lethal Lava Land is, well, don't be a pushover, if anyone tries to shove you around, push back, it's a one-on-one -on -one with a fiery finish for the loser. So you might have just heard me gone silent for a minute, or maybe I cut that part out, but uh, I accidentally spoiled a part of this. And I know that everyone has played Mario 64, but for like the two people watching that, ha that haven't, I'll try to keep this as spoiler free as possible. I went silent there for a second because I've died lots of times to that where I've accidentally just fallen down and then landed on the platform and then that's fallen down and then I die and I have to go through the boss fight again. Bully the Bullies. So this one is a bit of a tougher version of that previous one. The platform that you have to go to is a bit farther away and plus there are some more enemies to fight. I can't make that long jump. Oh, gosh dang it. We didn't lose too much health, though. Except for that part, where... Thankfully, though, there are some coins up here. So now we just need to get these guys off. coin puzzle with the 15 pieces. This is the toughest level possible. This is the hardest star in Super Mario 64. One of the most challenging, brutal, tasking stars 
and I almost failed it somehow. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the easiest star in the entire game. All of the red coins are just right there. It's pretty easy to avoid the moving puzzle pieces because, you know, there's only one place they can move. So just stay away from that. Red Hot Log Rolling. There's actually a super easy way to beat this one. I'll probably do a bit of skipping here. Just because... I don't think anyone's going to be mad at me for not rolling the log all the way. So you want to take this platform right over here to the aforementioned Red Hot Log. It's not very red, nor is it hot. I guess the red hot describes the action of rolling the log, because, you know, the log is in lava, or it's right above lava. So we just want to jump over here, my heart almost sank, and we get star number 44. Hot foot it into the volcano. Yes, we're going inside of the volcano that we saw earlier. That was the spoiler that I had to cut out because, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone has played this game once again, but, you know, just for the two people who didn't know, I thought I'd surprise them, I guess. That was the weirdest sequence right there because I was I was amazing for like five seconds and then there was a part where I was like, oh nope, I've put all of my eggs into one jumping basket and now I'm going over the edge and then I saved myself and I was like, wow, I'm better than I thought I was and then I fell straight off of the edge. If anyone's anxiety just went up, note that mine also went up, like, mine s spiked. Our last star in Lethal Lava Land. Elevator tour in the volcano. So this one's an easier uh, volcano star, because there's a way that you can just very quickly get to the end of it. So you're supposed to go that way and then go up there, but that's super slow. And so I'm just gonna... There we go. These pole jumps are, are always super nerve-wracking for me because Depth perception isn't really a thing in Nintendo 64 games, or at least in this section anyway. But that's star number 46. With Core 7 over, we could go ahead and end off the video once we get to 50 stars. We want to hop right into this wall and it actually is a painting. It's a bit weird, but that's uh... Course number eight, Shifting Sand Land, and our first star is in the Talons of the Big Bird. Not the character from Sesame Street, but this big bird over here, Klepto. I actually named a uh, Spiro after him in Pokemon. Speaking of Pokemon, the new Pokemon game came out. I say new, but it's a remake of... Uh, Generation 4, which people have been waiting for for a while, so super happy for those who have been waiting. I haven't played through Gen 4 fully yet. I got through like the first couple of gyms. I need to go back and replay that. I also should probably complete a Pokemon Let's Play one of these days because you guys probably don't know this, but I have had a couple channels now on YouTube. I've had a couple channels now on YouTube, and I've had probably about four or five Pokemon Let's P Let's Plays across them all, none of which I've finished, so maybe one day in the future, 
I'll actually finish one on this channel. I actually had one on this channel. Gosh dang it, this one area next to the pyramid keeps getting me. Anyways, what I wanted to show was Klepto, once you take his star, he's not happy with you. So if you go near him at all, he swoops down by you, and he steals your hat. And so now, when you lose your hat, you take a lot more damage than normal. So normally, that Pokey wouldn't do three whole bits of damage to me. But now it does. Our star here, I haven't even mentioned it, is shining atop the pyramid. Star number 48, and that might be where we end off the video here. Because I've been recording for about 20 minutes now. Well, what's our next star, Joe? I want to continue inside... You know what? Nah. But it would be really cool if we ended off on 50. But I don't want to get this star. You know what, fine, we'll end it off on 50. We'll do a bit of a longer episode. So the way that you want to do this is... We'll go ahead and grab the wing cap. And there's an easier way to do this. But I'll go ahead and do it the longer way, which is to go into the pyramid here. And you have to climb all the way up. And there's a quicker way where you go in from the top of the pyramid. But, I don't know. I like to go through stuff normally. Because like I said in episode 6, I see my stuff as sort of a walkthrough. And so I'm just kind of showing you guys how to do this. Or at least how I do it. Because I know everyone plays through the game differently. Some people get stars out of order and stuff like that. Some people... Some people skip to different courses immediately. Like, some people uh, do Cool Cool Mountain as their second world. Some people do Star 5 in bob on Battlefield. They just shoot themselves out of the cannon. And they just keep shooting themselves out over and over without the wing cap. Uh, so that they can get that as their fifth star. Everyone plays the game differently is what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to show you guys how I do it. And it's not going to be the same way that everyone else does it. Stand tall on the four pillars. So this is cool. Not only are we ending this off by getting 50 stars. We're also ending this off on a boss fight. So that's pretty sick. So... You want to do just what the star title says. The star titles are always a hint, if you haven't picked that up yet. So if you're ever not sure of how to get a star, start by trying to just do what the star says. And if that's not helpful, if it's something like... I don't know, I'll put up on screen an example of a star name not being helpful. But once you stand on all four pillars, the top of the pyramid rises up. And this is actually how I normally get the stars. I jump out of here and grab it right there. Uh, that's the speedrun way of doing it. But yeah, we're slowly being lowered down into the arena, so shall we say. Might be saying, huh, this is a bit weird. Where's the boss fight? There's nothing here. Every Nintendo game, or at least every, like, big Nintendo game, has to have a hands based boss fight. This is, I forget the name, but he's basically like the pharaoh of this pyramid, and he speaks like a caveman. 
Wake Ancient Ones, we know like Light, Rumble, we know like Intruders. Now battle hand to hand. It's a pun with their hands. I always found this boss fight really weird. Because like their hands with eyeballs on them. Which always like creeped me out. Like imagine if your hand had an eyeball on it. Yeah. But after you punch it in the eye a couple of times, they start banging their hands on the floor. And after one hand sus sustains enough damage, the other one starts going after you. Just punch it once, and they start talking again. What happened? We crushed like Pebble. You're so strong. You rule ancient pyramid for today. Now take pow star of power. We sleep darkness. I always found that a bit dark. No pun intended. That's star number 50. You've recovered 50 power stars. Now you can open the star door on the third floor. Bowser's there, you know. Oh, you found all the cap switches, haven't you? Red, green, and blue. The caps you, you get from the colored blocks are really helpful. Hurry along now. The third floor is just ahead. And we still have two more worlds before that happens. But yeah, in this episode, we got 50 stars and became a pharaoh, so I think that's pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and finish up Shifting Sandland and move on to Dire Dire Docks. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!